Kedves vendégeink, hölgyem és uraim, nagy-nagy szeretettel köszöntök mindenkit itt a World Conservation Forum színpadán. Mellettem Jós Andrea, előttem Némo, én Csorba Miklós vagyok, és megígértem, hogy nem fogok visszajönni ezzel az információval, de képtelen vagyok kihagyni. Mivel Andrea angolul fog beszélni a következő pár másodpercben, ezért szeretném, hogyha önök is tudnák, hogy angolul az ő neve Jós Andrából, Andrea Juice. Juice? Miss Juice? Juice, that's how they say my name. So... Good morning, everyone, and a heartfelt welcome to all of you who are here in person and all of you who are watching us online. This is Miklos Ksorba, if, if I would like to say <laughs> your name as with an English accent, but actually it's Chorba. And my name is Andrea Jos, and we were just having fun about the double O and the J in the beginning. Um, well, we are going to have a wonderful day, and I am speaking to you in English throughout the day, basically. Igen, ez egy trükkös történet lesz, mert most például én beszélek magyarul, de az első beszélgetésünk során már angolul fogunk szólni, de tulajdonképpen ez egy ilyen történet lesznek. Magyar nyelvű és angol nyelvű előadások, beszélgetések is az egész nap. Javaslom, gyorsan fussuk át, hogy mi mindennel készültünk a mai napra. So, what we are going to have today? Well, the last one is going to be about space. Az utolsó előadásunk, fordítva, visz, visszamegyünk szépen az időben egészen a jelen pillanatig, a, az űriparról fog szólni, és arról, hogy miközben a Föld kihívásainak az űriparhoz, illetve hogyan tud esetleg megoldást nyújtani majd erre a kérdésre. Aztán... Then, or before that, we are going to have a conversation about the power of youth also. Előtte, ezt megerőzően, tehát az űrbeutazás előtt a fiatalság erejéről lesz szó. <laughs> Ez a címe egyébként, The Power of Youth. Well, that comes back later on again, if we can mix up with, the, with, the, with our timings, because the youth will represent themselves twice at least this day, but in the meantime we are going to have also geopolitics and apocalypse. Előtte egy... Um... Hát egy, nyilván nem túl vidám, viszont már csak ezen a színpadon is tekintettel arra, hogy a fenntarthatóság jegyében szervezzük a témákat, egy igen aktuális és fontos sztoriról lesz szó, hogy vajon a klímaváltozás, a klímakérdés e a legfontosabb kihívásunk mai nap, vagy hát legalábbis napjainkban. Erről fogunk majd beszélgetni. Apokalipszis van-e, vagy nincs-e? Or is it going to happen very soon? And... Also, we are going to speak about diseases and viruses and how nature strikes back to humanity. Or what is a disease, if, I, if we want to know at all. És még mielőtt beszélgetnénk majd három rendkívül tehetséges fiatallal, akik, ahogy Adra is mondta az előbb, a fiatalságot képviselve, egyfajta jövőképpel fognak majd elénk állni, legalábbis meg fogjuk tippen egy 50 év múlva, ők hogyan látják magukat és azt a területet, amivel sikereket nyújtottak. Fogunk beszélgetni arról, ami tulajdonképpen megint csak egy nézőpont azokról a dolgokról, amik manapság történnek, nyilván itt főleg a vírushelyzet kapcsán. A természet visszavág. Na de hogy mik a körülményei, az nem sokára kiderül. And our first program is going to be about the future of Europe. And it is a conversa conversation on the conservation forum. <laughs> I don't know how many times you mix that, those two words. Folyamatosan, but you'll see it. Nicely done. Yes. And uh, we are going to welcome the Deputy Secretary of State for EU Relations. And I think the time has come to um, say her name out loud. What do you say? Hölgyeim és Uraim, az első beszélgetés az Európa jövőjéért szóló konferencia sorozat kapcsán indul majd, és van szerencsénk a színpadon vendégként tisztelni Bólya Boglárka, Európai Uniós kapcsolatokért felelős helyettes államtitkár asszonyt. Vele folytatjuk tehát. So, welcome, Boglárka, Bólya. The world is changing fast. How should the European Union evolve to face new challenges? What would strengthen its democracy and make it fit for the coming decades? What about the economy, the environment, our health? Your views count. The European Parliament has laid the foundations of the Conference on the Future of Europe alongside the European Commission and EU countries. Abbiamo l'opportunità di riscoprire l'anima del progetto europeo e farla vivere nella contemporaneità. Invitiamo quindi tutti i cittadini europei 
a partecipare alla conferenza e a costruire l'Europa di domani affinché diventi davvero la loro Europa. The conference, which was delayed by the pandemic, will begin soon. At the heart of the conference will be you, Europe's citizens and civil society representing your interests on the ground at local, regional, national and European levels. People will be able to debate, discuss and share ideas in citizen panels. While anyone can participate, young people especially are encouraged to give their feedback through digital platforms and events, such as the European Youth Event in Strasbourg. The conference will be chaired by the Presidents of the European Parliament, the Council and the Commission. When the conference reports its conclusions in spring 2022, Parliament will use the findings to push for an EU which has the priorities of Europeans at its heart and is ready to address their concerns. Sok szeretettel köszöntöm, helyettes államtitkár asszony. Tekintettel arra, hogy ez egy angol nyelvű beszélgetés lesz, ezért engedjék meg, hogy átkapcsoljak angolra. So, welcome on the stage. And um, first of all, could you please briefly present um, what is the conference on the, of the future of Europe? Yes, thank you very much for this invitation. And I would also like to welcome you, the very committed, I can see it. <laughs> from your eyes. <laughs> so as you can see, this is a pan-European consultation process and has actually um, started in, uh, in this year, May, the 9th of May, but was already announced in 2019, in the end of 2019, by Ursula von der Leyen. But actually, as you could see, the European Parliament has taken a very interesting part in it. And uh, President Tajani, the former European Parliament president, actually already started these conversations in the European Parliament in 2017 and 2018 and invited government leaders in the plenary to talk about the future of Europe. But officially, it was uh, announced by Ursula von der Leyen and it was launched this year, the 9th of May, after basically one uh, year of uh, delay. What do we expect from, from this uh, pan-European consultation? So basically the main aim is to listen to the citizens, to see what are the reform proposals that maybe the EU should undertake, also concerning the institution, also concerning the, the, uh, the policies. And what for me actually it's very important in this whole process is that I hope or we hope that this could maybe bring the citizens closer to the European Union. And so as you could see, there are actually events, conferences, debates, also physically and also in digital sphere involving the European citizens. And there are three core elements, basically, uh, from this uh, conference. One is the European citizens panels and national citizens panels. Then there is a plenary that basically this plenary will discuss uh, proposals made by the citizens on the digital platform, but also in this European citizens panels. And this plenary basically will adopt conclusions in a final report and will submit this to the three main institutions. And then the third one, which is I think the most important for, for you, and for our citizens is this digital platform that we will see later on um, in more detail and where basically all the events are, um, it's a, a database basically where all the events are basically on this platform and all the IDs, events, comments, you can all uh, see and, and search there. But that we will see later on. It's a very complex system. I don't know whether I could explain it in a, very, in a simple way, but it's a really Brussels, uh, I don't even know, bubble, oh, that's a nice word, a Brussels bubble, a complex compromise, but what is important, I think, here is the digital platform that we will see later on. All right, but right before we focus to the details, uh, for example, of this digital platform, just uh, one step back. Uh, how would you think the conference's topics are related to this exhibition's topics? 
This is actually a good question that I also put to myself, and I was actually expecting this question. So we found a nice quotation from our, a very famous philosopher, Roger Scruton, that I will now um, quote. There is no political cause more amenable to the conservative vision than that of the environment, for it touches on the three funda foundational ideas of our movement, transgenerational loyalty, the priority of the local, and the search for home. All right. Uh, at this point, I think we should watch a video and uh, discuss the rest later on. Yes. So let us see the video. It's beautiful. We should keep these things this way. Uh, anyway, about Hungary. Uh, what do you think the conference means to Hungary? What, what, what are the takes that, uh, that, it, that, that are the reasons why it's so important for Hungary? Uh, you know, the topics and the digital platform and, uh, and anyway, uh, all the aspects of Hungary linked to the conference. Yes, thank you very much. Actually, I just want to come back a little bit to, to this uh, beautiful video because um, for us Hungarians, the, our heritage is very important. That includes also our precious natural resources and also including our tradition like hunting tradition. So this is not a surprise, actually, that the Hungarian government is very committed to sustainability and to circular economy and preserve our nature, preserve our environment, and also to fight climate change. And this is something I, I would like to emphasize because it's many times for, forgotten that actually Hungary is at the forefront of, this, uh, of, the, of the climate change. Since 1990, we have reduced our emission by 33%, and uh, by 2030, the aim is 40. And by the end of the decade, we are aiming basically to have 90% uh, emission reduction. And by 2050, we will reach climate neutrality. And this is actually enshrined in a law adopted last year. So Hungary is taking very seriously this commitment. And also at the European level, they are proposing very constructive proposals and we are participating in this debate. So actually all these topics, environment, sustainability, environment protection, these are all interlinked to each other and also linked to many, many topics. These are traversal issues, so it can be health, economy, uh, climate change. And uh, that's why we are at the forefront and we are also uh, very active at the European level. And also, for example, at the digital platform, most of the events registered are, are basically uh, related to environment and, uh, and climate change. So it is very important that uh, also, also here that we give a clear sign that we would like to protect our nature, our environment, and we also give this clear sign to the, to the EU. And for example, these this exhibits uh, 
attracts many professionals related well, somehow to nature, but also nature lovers. So that uh, would be very important and the force of good if you could upload your, your ideas in this digital platform. And now coming, coming back to your, your question, basically it's um, very important that our Prime Minister, Viktor Orban, was the first uh, Prime Minister at the European level who has concrete visions on the future of Europe. And these concrete proposals are basically enshrined in, in seven points that are available online. And that these seven points are addressed to European citizens. So it, is, it was actually published in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in newspapers. So can everyone read it? And also, in terms, of, uh, in terms of events, we are actually very proactive since the beginning, even before the beginning. Because as I mentioned, this uh, should have started actually one year ago in 2020, 9th of May. But it was because of the pandemic and because of some Brussels power game. In the end, uh, it was one year delay. But we have started basically at the original timing. So the Minister of Justice organized already three conferences and already in 2020. One was an opening debate discussion about the expectation. Uh, the second one was um, about how to make Europe stronger and uh, more resilient, obviously, uh, reflecting to the, to the pandemic. And the third one was this year on the Digital European Union. And we had uh, speakers like uh, Maria Gabriel, Commissioner, Dobrav Kasovica, Vice President of the Commission, and uh, former EP President Antonio Tajani. So very high-level uh, international conferences. And we are now organizing the fourth one on EU enlargement. So I can say that basically our prime minister was the first one who shared his concrete vision about the future of Europe. And we were also the first one who started to organize events concerning this Pan-European debate. And uh, what are your experiences about the Hungarian people? How actively they uh, link to this vision or, 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 or any kind of activity, uh, the amount of the, of the caretaking, what do you, what do you think? Well, I, um, I can proudly say that as regards the events registered on this platform, on this digital platform, we are the third, so we are on the podium since months, meaning after Italy and after Germany, that if we look at the population rate, we are basically the first one. But I can say this proudly, but we are the third one. But if we can look at the population, we can proudly say that we are the first one. We have more or less 200 events uh, organized and registered in this platform uh, concerning the future of Europe. And I hope that this also <laughs> this expo is going to be also registered, or actually is already registered in, in the platform. So as regards the comments and ideas, I, I see that there is an increased uh, interest, but uh, I always uh, take the opportunity basically to encourage uh, each and everyone to register on this platform and uh, share the comments or share ideas or endorse others' comments. And that we can see later, actually, what is the exact form to register and to share ideas and comments on this platform. All right, thank you. Uh, now it is the time when I, I, I uh, yeah, I can hear you actually. So I'm not sure, but um, you've mentioned some of the topics of the of the conference, but I'm not sure that we fulfilled all the list. What topics are important? Yes, uh, there. They are important, but there is a category that calls others, which basically, basically means that anything can go on the platform. But the topics are, there are nine topics, basically climate change, environment, health, education, use, migration, security, values and rights, democracy, EU in the world. And there is a ninth category, and the tenth category is others. So basically every topic can be included and also for example, in these topics, there are subcategories. So for environment and climate change, there, there are subcategories. And I am sure that hunting, for example, can also go into this category or preservation of nature or biodiversity. And so if they don't go to one category, then there is this other category where basically everything, everything can go. So it's you, you can be very creative 
And I also encourage each and every one to be very creative because really every, every idea can go and every event can go that has a bit of, obviously must have a link to the future of, uh, future of Europe. Could you please highlight uh, what, which topics are the most important for, for Hungarians or, or what are those topics, uh, what you actually think to, to have more and more comments from the Hungarians? Uh, well, that's a different, well, that's a different and a difficult uh, question because, for example, I mentioned that the events, in average, they are most re related to the environment and climate change. But also the Hungarian events, for example, most of the Hungarian events are registered for education and use. So I don't want to prescribe basically what should be, what the citizens should think and what kind of comments and ideas they should put on. Basically, that's their it's their choice, but, but obviously, um, obviously the Hungarian government has positions, as I underlined. Uh, we have the Prime Minister, Orban Viktor, had seven thesis, basically, but I don't like this word, to use seven points when we have concrete visions. So, for example, I, that's no surprise that one of the, one of the, the thesis talks about uh, Brussels, uh, talks about a, a super state being built without a mandate, and that is something that, for example, we say no to the empire, Brussels empire, because we believe in a strong European Union based on strong member states. And there's also one point concerning the citizens. For us, the most important is our citizens. So we would like that it stays, basically, the focus and the heart of this conference stays at the citizens. And also the government has a long-standing tradition to ask people's and the citizens' view. So for us, that's no surprise. And we would really like to see that the citizens are in the middle of this conference and no predetermined ideology that uh, should dominate. And um, in, in these terms, there is one point that uh, by our prime minister that says that we must protect our citizens. And so we have to create security and uh, economic uh, success uh, in the world. Because the challenges, the, the next decade will be also full of challenges like migration, like epidemics, pandemia. So it's very important that we must protect our citizens. All right, um, to this point we talk about why is it important and what topics uh, are involved to, to, the, to the conference. How can we participate? Uh, I think this is the time of that digital platform. Yes, so I don't want to preempt uh, basically the, the video, but exactly this is the, now it's time to uh, the citizens basically to, to participate how to shape in the future of Europe. And this is the first time for us Hungarians that we can, we can really shape our future because everything was decided before our accession. Everything was decided without us, but about us. So now is the first time that the Hungarian citizens can have a word and where the European Union should be, should be heading. All right, I suppose we have another video now, right now.
All right. Catchy and easily understandable, but um, you know, the reason why we are, we are talking in English and the video was also in English, I think we should underline that um, on the platform when you digitalize yourself, uh, you, can, you can read and comment in your own language. Does that mean that Italy Hungarian? All right. Yes. Okay. All Thank the you. 24 languages can okay. be used. All the 24 languages. Mm -hmm. That means Hungarian. Okay. Um, could you please uh, tell me about the, the EU reform plan of Hungary? Because... The EU reform yeah, plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what kind of reforms does Hungary have in mind in connection with the EU? Well, is it possible that I come back a bit to this digital platform? Sure. Because I think it's, it's very, very important. Uh, yeah. Because this is the main, here, what I'm talking about, I think this is, this is the main idea that the ones who are listening, they get the idea and they are more and more encouraged to use this digital platform. So just, just very briefly, this digital platform is the central hub of this conference. And I, and I said, and it was actually quite clear here, the events can be organized. You can uh, uh, also attend the events near to you. You can, uh, you can share ideas, comments, endorse other ideas and, uh, um, and, and comments and events. So this, this is why I encourage each and every one of you to, to use this platform, because in the end, it's a very complex system, but in the end, what we hope is that the, the most popular ideas, basically, they will feed into the European Union channel and also the decision makers, hopefully, will take into account. So in the end, there will be a plenary and that will draw conclusions in a final report that will go to the three main institutional leaders and they will follow up. So that's why it is very important because they are supposed to basically take into account the ideas that are uh, the most popular in uh, this digital uh, platform. What does, do you have any uh, exact top list or what, what uh, or how many of those, you know, I, I, I've read that right now we are more than, uh, we have more than uh, 4,500 ideas. So uh, how many ideas will be the most important that will affect the plenary? Well, as I said, uh, the, most, uh, the, t the topics basically that are the most popular related to climate change and environment. In, in Hungary, youth and education. So the, we can check the events, but we cannot check 20,000 IDs. So I just, that is an average, basically. So what are the most popular IDs or what are the most popular topics? But this, this can change. Uh, this can change, obviously, uh, according to the interest of, uh, of the citizens. And as regards the, the European Union and the Hungary's reform plans, I already, mentioned, I already mentioned a few that can be also important for the citizens, but I can name a lot. For example, if we are talking about reform change, we can mention the European Parliament, that uh, basically we think that this uh, is a dead end for democracy because they are they are uh, basically pursuing their own party and ideological and institutional agenda. So that one proposal is that we should, uh, should um, um, use the national parliaments much more. Basically, they are the legitimate uh, representatives of a country. So that is one proposal, uh, institutional proposal. But uh, what I said, for example, that we must protect our citizens' security, a common uh, or weight in the common and global economic world. This is something that is also uh, very important. And the Prime Minister said that if we cannot be basically successful together, then alone, then that's, that's a problem that could be the, the end of the EU. So it is very important that um, we focus on ideas and, and problems that uh, our citizens most interested in. So not ideological and abstract and even institutional debates, because uh, that's important, but our citizens, they, they, it's not that they don't understand, but they doesn't really reflect their everyday lives. So what we want is really uh, issues that they touch upon their, their everyday life. 
because this is the, the part when it, what is actually uh, about how can you uh, be the part of affecting uh, the future of Europe. I think it, this is the time when I uh, have to ask you if you have any questions. Now it's time to put or address Miss Juice. <laughs> Okay, I think we will need a microphone because we cannot hear you. Do you have a favorite project uh, of the project what you saw online or a favorite topic that is personally what is your your best or favorite? That I, I cannot be objective, actually, because obviously my favorite <laughs> projects that we are organizing in the ministry that I already talked about, these three conferences, but out of these 200, obviously they are, well, 90% 90, 90 are, are, are very much, I would say, in line what we we would like to see, and it's very important that 90% uh, of the events, they have real, real conclusions, they have... Uh, uh, long-standing and long-term uh, proposals and conclusions. So we are very uh, actually pleased with the events because that means that Hungarians are very interested and they are invested pro proactively basically in this, in this debate. But, but, <laughs> but we need more ideas and comments and, and proposals. And obviously events are not so easy to organize, but I can say that you can be very creative. So if we talk, three people are having a discussion about the future of the Europe, that can also count as an event. And uh, uploading, it you can be very creative, it can be uploaded afterwards. What is important is there is a summary behind, there is a conclusion behind, because otherwise it doesn't count as an event. But Yet, obviously, that takes more effort and energy than, than a one-minute ID or a comment or endorsement. So I would like to basically really, again, encourage each of you, because this is when you can have the, the power of your voice. And as I, I mentioned, I would like to emphasize again that this is the first time that Hungarians have a chance, basically, to, to say and to, to see um, when to determine where the European Union should be heading. And hopefully, we have to be optimistic, hopefully it's not going to be hijacked by any institution or ideology or a political agenda, but we have to take our part, and this is our responsibility, that uh, Hungarians are, are proactively um, participating in this debate because that in the end we want that it would be also with us and not without us. All right, thanks. Any other questions? Oh, sir, go ahead, uh, after you get the mic. Thank you. I would like to ask a bit about the EU platform you just promoted. Uh, my question is, uh, is there any guarantees, are there any guarantees that the city the opinions of the citizens on, on this platform are going to be taken into account in the debates of the future of the EU, or it's, is it just a symbolic <laughs> thing? Yeah, well, that's the, uh, that, that's a very good question. Actually, that's the core of the, the core of all this exercise. I. Um, <laughs> I cannot promise, because I am not handling this digital platform, but uh, we, we are optimistic. So we have to be a reference point. When I, when I say, for example, that Hungarians, we are very proactive and very constructive, I have facts. I have facts that we have 200 events, and only, um, only Italy and Germany is ahead of us. So this is a reference point, and obviously I can check mostly about the events, but that's not my that's not my job. But uh, also at the comments and the ideas, 
there are, I don't know, 20,000, so out of which maybe 4,500 is Hungarians. So that is a reference point. But this is up, up to the, basically up to the plenary, up to the citizens, European citizens panel, how to feed and how to channel these opinions. So we, as I said, we have to be optimist, we have to do our job, and that we say that, look, out of uh, 20,000 IDs, Hungarians have 4,000, out of uh, 2,000 events, Hungarians have 200. So this is a, re this is a reference point when we can say that we really proactively invested in this debate with concrete proposals and ideas. And I, if I go to the plenary, I will obviously uh, say this and I will obviously represent this interest. So we, we have to basically follow, follow it up, but I cannot put uh, comments and ideas on this uh, platform as much as I want it, so that's why it's important that the Hungarians participate, because this is a reference point that uh, citizens and member states can represent in this plenary conference. Let's stay optimistic. Uh, there are some suspicions, obviously, for double standards, as, as always, but we have, to, we have to do it. Thank you. Sorry, I, ha I also have a question. All right. First of all, rather two questions. First of all, uh, uh, what do you think about the future of Europe? And the second question is, uh, how can you imagine uh, youth in the future <laughs> Europe? That's a very easy <laughs> question. Well, uh, I would be on the safe side. So I would uh, emphasize what our prime minister said, that the next decade, next decade will be, uh, well, it's not very optimistic, but we have to be cautious. So the next decade will be, again, the decade of challenges. So let's see what uh, our, our past 10 years, it was basically a decade of failures of the European Union and also a decade of challenges that we have not foreseen before. So we had migration challenge, we had uh, Brexit, we had uh, the economical um, crisis. So we have to think, we have to stop a bit now, and we have to think really what the European Union should be having. Also in the global stage, the European Union as a GDP and as an economic actor is basically shrinking. So it's time it's time really to think whether we are, what we are doing and whether, where we are heading, it really makes sense. And also in terms of the citizens, because we have ideological debates, institutional debates about more Europe, ever closing union, but really, does it really interest the citizens? No, what they want is that they are protected, they want their security, and they would like to live well. And this, this is, I think, what we, what we have to think, is uh, that meaningful debates and not ideological and abstract uh, debates of more federalism, more Brussels, more competence in Brussels, actually, no. What we should really put in focus is what the citizens want and how to put, basically, the European Union back to the global stage. And this is why we think that we should really focus on, uh, on the uh, strong member states, and these strong member states should basically form the European Union. So we believe in this so-called Europe of Nations and not, a total, and not the, the European states, because this is, is not possible. And also the COVID showed us that the member states alone can be more successful when there is a crisis than the European Union together. And also for the migration crisis in 2015, now the European Union is basically saying the same thing that our Prime Minister in 2015, when we were the black sheep, and now they are all using the same, the same solutions. All right. Uh, let's go I don't back. Don't remember and, the second yeah, question. I was, <laughs> do you have any more questions? Or we can go to pick up my previous one, which is actually uh, can link to the, to the previous question about the future of, of Europe. But um, I had a question about the reform plans 
for the European Union, Hungary's reform plans. Do you? <laughs> yeah, I know, but you know, I'm, I'm really sorry if I put <laughs> all the same questions again, but um, anyway, it, yeah. Sometimes I cannot so hear you. So you. you mean <laughs> the, the Hungarian reform plans to the European for Union? For the European Union. Yeah. So yes, that, uh, and then I would come back to the same. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> Underline, to, to, uh, underline and emphasize yeah. this, uh, the seven points of, uh, of Viktor Orban. And I already mentioned a few. Now, if you, if you insist, I will, actually, I will actually mention another one that is also very, uh, very important. And I forgot to mention maybe one of the most important points now that we are also facing again on migration crisis is the Western Balkan. So we strongly believe that, uh, that the Western Balkans, uh, they should be admitted to the European Union. And um, they cannot basically talk the security of the European Union without the security of the Western Balkans. And now also with the migration crisis and also five years ago, we have to see that uh, uh, they, uh, they are stopping. Well, I wouldn't say only they, but they are stopping the migrants and obviously our fans. So without Western Balkan security, we cannot talk about the security of the European Union. So this is a, a very important question and they are gradually losing, uh, losing their perspective, which is very bad, not just because of the migration cases, it's not just because of the security, but also because then there are, I'm sure there are other powers who would very much like to uh, have their, their level playing field in the Western Balkans. So we really have to give them a credible perspective and that's why one of, one, one of the, these seven points is very, um, very emphasized and underlined is that Serbia must be admitted to the European Union. And all, about all the others I already spoke. <laughs> all right. Um, as the closing of our conversation, uh, do you mind to highlight any of, uh, of, of a final message to the audience or the viewers that, who are following us online? Participate. <laughs> well, actually, you, you said it. So, so, yes, well, I just um, have to underline again that uh, it's, it's not time to, to think a bit where the European Union is heading. We had a decade of crisis. We have in front of us a lot of challenges. So now we would really think uh, and pause a bit. And, and as uh, I would like to underline again that for us Hungarians, but also maybe for, for other countries, there's the first time when the citizens can, can really participate, directly getting involved. And for the Hungarians, surely. So now, now this is the time to, to make your, your voice heard and encourage uh, the friendships, uh, family, neighbor, because, uh, because now you, the, your, your voice really counts, hopefully, but we, we shouldn't miss this chance and, um, and let's uh, basically use and show the European Union the, the power of our voice. Thank you very much. <laughs> That was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Through innovative thoughts. Yeah. Thank you very much. And thanks for your questions. Um, I think we have one more video just to, to show, but uh, that will be the very ending of this dialogue. So uh, all for the guests right here at the stage of the World Conservation Forum and for those who are following us online streaming, the next topic on the stage will be about Nature Strikes Back. How can how can we defend ourselves against the viruses of the future? That is what we will continue with at 1 p.m. So um, join us. And now let's uh, see the Actually, video. just one, one last sentence, because when, now when I was coming here and I was driving, and then I just drive through this Kariko Katalin wall that says that a jövőt magyarok írják. Hajrá. Köszönjük szépen. Invented in Hungary. Innovation adds global value by bringing novel ideas implemented locally. What pops into your mind when you hear the term Hungarian innovation? This, or that, or maybe this? It is creative, proactive, builds on tradition, 
yet high-tech and forward-looking. Always eager to create something new, Hungarian scientists and innovators not only claim the lion's share from the early days of the Industrial Revolution, but also act as a strong driving force behind today's Industry 4.0 implementations. Creativity, cutting-edge ideas, and strong commitment are key elements, yet innovation is not always easy to recognize. Some of the greatest innovations are as simple as washing your hand to save millions of lives while others look beyond the obvious and dissect a vegetable to discover the hidden world of vitamins. Innovation is fueled by creativity, born where business challenges meet technology and designed to seamlessly fulfill human needs. Just think about it. Innovation starts with creative problem solving, but it is not just a process, rather an attitude and a way of life, always thinking out of the box. Creativity, design, and art thus naturally go hand in hand with innovation, forged by its surrounding environment. But in Hungary, we go even one step further by consciously placing human-centric design and value chains in the focus of our innovation ecosystem. Research, creativity, and incubation lead to economic transformation and lasting impact. Standing on the shoulders of giants, we have created inspiring creative environments, both physically and digitally where members can share resources, find partners, and rapidly exchange ideas. Hungary's high technology industry benefits both from the country's skilled workforce and the strong presence of foreign high tech firms, research centers, and strategic investments. This organic collaboration between different actors and sectors is supported by public and private organizations, all set against a vibrant startup funding backdrop. Hungary's creative industry is one of our new rising stars. Our creative asset exports have doubled over the past two decades. Budapest is a regionally outstanding and dynamically growing capital that was awarded the Creative City of Design title by UNESCO a few years ago, and it was voted among Europe's most creative cities in 2019. The impact of our mission is already evidenced by a new generation of innovative companies entering the global marketplace. They carry on the legacy of Rubik's Cube in combining functionality, versatility, and an infinite number of combinations with elegance and simplicity by design. They cover a broad range of application areas from biotech and medicine to agriculture, from communication and security to fintech. Additive manufacturing and material science has led to novelties in 3D printing and sports technology. Artificial intelligence powers automated driving and helps create modern interactive living spaces, while transparent concrete pushes the limits of architecture in homes and public venues alike. Come and look around Hungary. Find interesting ideas bubbling up everywhere and take a deep dive into our talent pools. Our world-class universities play a vital role in developing this talent. They inspire those who aspire and recognize that every idea is a good idea and new thoughts can come any moment from anywhere. By fostering innovation and recognizing that it is the catalyst to business growth, they provide support for a new generation of creative thinkers and entrepreneurs to help them challenge the usual way of doing things while taking personal responsibility for setting new goals for the future. As you can see, science, technology, and design thinking are a few of Hungary's most developed sectors. The future lies in our past, and traditions lead the way to find new solutions. Innovation today, better life tomorrow. Invented in Hungary, every innovation is a story. Each story brings new inspiration.